Monopolies like Apple's threaten the free and fair markets upon which our economy is based. The Department of Justice is suing Apple for being, as it says, an illegal monopoly. But for years, Apple has argued that it isn't. We have no monopoly. There is no monopoly here. To make its case, the DOJ is pinning its argument to Section 2 of the Sherman Act, which makes it illegal to monopolize or attempt to monopolize a market, adding Apple to a long line of American companies that have been sued under that law. Some have been forced to fundamentally change the way they work, or even break up completely. Brendan Benedict is an antitrust lawyer who has litigated against Apple before. There's nothing about the Sherman Act that makes making money or, or collecting user information unlawful. What it does do is create a set of rules so that the method by which companies do that is fair. Here's how the DOJ plans to show that Apple is a monopoly and how the company might fight back. The Sherman Act dates back to 1890, when it was used mostly to reduce monopoly power in industries like oil, tobacco, and railroads. Today, it covers a different industry, big tech. The Sherman Act says, anyone who monopolizes or attempts to monopolize any part of trade or commerce in the US will be deemed guilty of a felony. But it doesn't actually define what a monopoly is. We know that monopolies have the power to raise prices above a competitive level and to exclude competition. But there's no bright line rule or light switch that says, yes, you're a monopoly, no, you're not a monopoly. So prosecutors will likely rely on a precedent that outlines three things the DOJ will have to show. That Apple has monopoly power in a relevant product market, and then to show that Apple willfully acquired or maintained that monopoly on something other than competition on the merits. First, the government will try to show that Apple is competing unfairly in what's called a relevant market, or in this case, two relevant markets, the performance smartphone market and the broader smartphone market, just in the US. Showing this is essential in showing the next piece, monopoly power. To show monopoly power typically takes two things. One is a high market share and then barriers to entry, which means that it's difficult for competitors to come in and lower that market share. The DOJ argues that Apple's share in the performance smartphone market exceeds 70%, and its share of the entire US smartphone market exceeds 65%. Then they'll have to show barriers to entry. The complaint alleges that the high cost of switching phones is one thing that makes it hard for competitors to disrupt Apple. But just being big or successful isn't necessarily illegal. The DOJ will also have to show that Apple maintains that monopoly power in ways that aren't fair. We allege that Apple has employed a strategy that relies on exclusionary, anti-competitive conduct the DOJ is focusing on five areas where it says Apple suppresses competition, super apps and cloud streaming, in which it says Apple imposes restrictions and fees on app developers, and messaging, smartwatches, and wallets, which the DOJ says Apple limits from working across platforms and with third-party apps. What the government has to show there is that the conduct they're challenging from Apple has anti-competitive effects. And that means things that are likely to increase price or diminish quality or choice. As a result of all of these things, the government alleges, iPhone users become dependent on Apple and its products and find the process of switching phones exceedingly costly and complex. Apple says that its practices help ensure the security and privacy of its platform and that it does not restrict third-party competitors. But the DOJ faces challenges in showing that all of this makes Apple an anti-competitive monopoly. For starters, it will need to define that relevant market and monopoly power. In the DOJ's case against Microsoft in 1998, it said Microsoft had more than a 95% share of the relevant market, and the court agreed. That helped squarely qualify it as a monopoly power. But Apple only has that 70% share in the performance smartphone market in the US, and even less when the market is broadened out. Apple will likely argue that the relevant market is worldwide, where the market share plummets. Apple says it has a less than 20% share of the global market, where it competes with Samsung and other manufacturers. In the Microsoft case, the relevant market was global. Benedict also says that focusing on five different areas, rather than one, 
could trip up the government. There's a theory out there for doing this called monopoly soup. There's some disagreement in the law right now whether the government has to show that each ingredient into the soup is on its own anti-competitive or whether the mix of ingredients together is anti-competitive. Apple, on the other hand, will have to show that its conduct is a benefit for consumers. Apple says its customers prefer Apple products rather than feeling locked in, which it successfully argued in Epic versus Apple, another antitrust lawsuit it was involved in in 2020. While the government points to the stickiness in switching ecosystems, Apple will point to the privacy and security that having everything on Team Apple offers to users, as well as the ease of use and the seamlessness from staying within the Apple ecosystem. Apple and the DOJ are looking at years of litigation, which could cost the company millions of dollars, time and attention from executives, and potentially its competitive edge. The Microsoft case took more than a decade to fully resolve, and Bill Gates has said that it put the company behind competitively. Take the New York Times Dealbook Conference in 2019, for example, where he said Microsoft fell behind in creating its own smartphone operating system. If it hadn't been for the antitrust case, uh, Microsoft would have gone, oh, we were so close. We, we, you know, I was just too distracted. And if the government wins, Apple could face big changes, like making its products easier to use with other devices and apps. If Apple has to make changes to those products in some way to accommodate the government, it thinks that it's compromising uh, on its qualities. But the upside is if the DOJ is right uh, and the evidence supports its claims, then injunctive relief could mean lower prices for consumers, more innovation, and better options for security and privacy.